early morning at the Kochi Harbour. Team Sunset TV is leaving on a thrilling, nerve-wracking ride on a tugboat. Tugboats are small but powerful marine vehicles that are used to pull or push large ships during manoeuvring or salvage activities. We are instructed on how to act in potentially dangerous situations, which could include a fire, collusion or even a boat capsize. The engine sounds get louder as the tug approaches our destination, kilometers away from the shore. We live in an energy-centric world where control over oil and gas translates into geopolitical clout for some and economic vulnerability for the others. Hello and welcome viewers, you're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV on India's largest public sector oil refinery, BPCL at Kochi. In this edition, we'll show you everything, how the crude is transported from mid-sea, its refining process and much more. So come along with me on this exciting journey. Winds and waves are always on the side of the ablest navigators. And on the oil wells offshore in the ocean, you need many such navigators. Oil wells, both on land and offshore in the ocean, pump oil up from the places, oftentimes kilometers underneath the surface. This oil is refined and turned into gas, diesel, lubricants, and other petroleum products. But how is it transported? Well, after the crude oil is extracted from the ground, it needs to be taken to its destination. Logistics of the infrastructure that is needed to transport crude oil worldwide is staggering. There are a variety of methods that can be utilized to transport this raw material. They include a mind-boggling array of pipelines and massive pan-continental shipping tankers. Huge quantities of crude oil and refined petroleum products are transported by ships between production sites refineries and points of consumption. For many years now, oil shipments have accounted for about 30% of the global maritime trade. From the different shores of America, Africa, Europe, Asia and the Middle East, crude oil travels down to India in very large crude carriers and is transferred to the shore tank. Navigating the choppy waters, our tugboat angles towards the very large crude carrier, pulling starboard in a delicate dance of precession and pinpoint timing. The enormity of the crude carrier is stunning and at the same time quite scary. You can see behind me very large crude carrier which is carrying the crude from different nations and that has been brought to India for further refining it. We'll just approach the ship and see how the entire process takes place. Next to our tiny tug the super tanker looms like a skyscraper rising from the deep sea. It is mini metropolis, stretching the equivalent of five city blocks. The VLCC, or very large crude carrier, is as long as New York's Empire State Building. I position myself on the launch rail to grab the 30-foot boarding ladder dropped down to me. It is the most difficult ladder I have ever ascended. My heart is racing at the sheer sight of the deep sea beneath and the sky-high stairs above. Finally, we were on the VLCC. With the majority of oil and gas reserves located in a handful of countries and refineries and consumers located across the globe, oil tankers play a vital role in transporting crude oil and refined petroleum products to where they are needed. Typically, very large crude carriers carry crude oil from the countries where it is extracted to the countries where it is refined. These ships typically have the capacity to carry 3,50,000 tons of crude oil in a single cargo.
In our everyday lives, when we use petroleum products, we barely spare a thought on how difficult the entire process is, how the fuel is transported to our homes for our cars. But now that Team Sunset TV is here, the enormity of the task is difficult to fathom. Because of their size, super tankers often cannot enter port fully loaded. These ships can take their cargo at offshore platforms and single point moorings. Single point mooring is a floating buoy or jetty anchored offshore to allow handling of liquid cargo such as petroleum products for tanker ships. Single point mooring is mainly used in areas where a dedicated facility for loading or unloading liquid cargo is not available. Located at a distance of several kilometers from the shore facility and connected with subsea and sub oil pipelines, these single point mooring facilities can even handle vessels of massive capacity such as this VLCC. With the strategic crude oil receipt facilities consisting of single point mooring and associated shore tank farm, Kochi Refinery has been receiving crude oil in very large crude carriers since December 2007. This facility helps in reducing the freight charges to a great extent, over and above increasing flexibility in crude oil selection. Sir, we are in the middle of the sea. Help us understand the entire process, how the crude is transported to the refinery. Yeah, we have a very large crude carrier of uh, Desh Vibor, which is owned by Shipping Corporation of India, which is carrying 2,80,000 tons of Marpan crude oil and Fasra uh, crude oil, which is pumping at the rate of 8,000 meter cube per hour to the shore tank farm at Kochi SPM. Here we have the uh, VLCC which is of length of uh, 333 meter length and uh, 60 meter wide and this is berthed to SPM using the two mooring hoses which are uh, connected to the SPM. We have a full back tank behind the, the ship which is take care of the uh, safety of the SPM when ship is uh, discharging the crude oil. And we have two floating hoses through which crude oil is pumped from ship cargoes to the SPM from where uh, crude is uh, carried to the shore tank farm for the wipe. So in everyday lives, we use so many petroleum products. But right now, since we are here, it seems so difficult, so complicated, so technically advanced. We must deconstruct this entire process. Yeah, welcome. This is Kochi SPM, a single point mode facility, the crude receipt facility of Kochi refinery and uh, Kochi C. This is 20 kilometers off the shore. We have a piping connected uh, to the tank form at the Pudu piping post. This SPM. Uh, under it's a 48 in subsea pipeline. The SP is anchored to the seabed using uh, six chains, the chains. It is uh, anchored at the seabed. The ships that is coating at Kuchi is berthed to the SPM and the crude oil is pumped using pumps of the ship through this floating hoses which are connected to the SPM. And from SPM, there are undersea hoses which are connecting to the pipeline end manifold, which is the end of the pipeline which is reaching to the pipeline. Uh, to the SPM. So that's a process in which now it's an entire, entire thing under the sea and a uh, lot of safety measures we have taken to protect the facility because it's a vital installation of the country. Uh, we have a, a support vessel and a maintenance vessel always stationed here and there is a security patrolling vessel which is moving around to see that uh, no untoward incidents are happening uh, to this facility. Uh, this is protected by Indian Navy as well as the Indian Coast Guard and we have a uh, 24 by 7 patrolling by our own security team uh, in a speedboat around. Around 2 nautical miles around uh, this area, surrounding this area is no fishing zone. So no other fishing activities or no boats are allowed to enter to these waters. So it's a vital installation protecting uh, the nation and supplying the energy needs of the country. The monumental size of the ship drives home the importance of the physical and mental fitness. To indicate some perspective, the ship's 2 million barrel capacity is enough to power every vehicle in the US over a 4 hour period. Handling the very large crude vessel calls for unbroken concentration to negotiate ever-changing variables of weather, visibility, sea traffic and even geopolitics. And it demands perfect coordination between the ship captain, the crew and logistical support systems around the world. In short, every day is a new challenge. By international law, the captain is in charge of the ship and all the people on board at all times. 
There is no shortcut to experience or continuous professional development, especially as the globe shipping industry expands, with vessels and cargo alike getting bigger, while port infrastructure and waterways remain static. After sumptuous food and warm hospitality, it's time to call it a day on the VLCC. If I had thought boarding the ship was challenging enough, my climb down to the tug was even more hair-raising, heart-pounding and terrifying. It was time to bid adieu to the oil warriors. This leg of covering the transportation of crude to the refinery was complete. Our next stop is India's largest, most advanced and green oil refinery in the public sector, Bharat Petroleum's Kochi Refinery. Kochi Refinery, one of the most versatile refineries of the Maharatna Bharat Petroleum, embarked on its journey in 1966 with a capacity of 50,000 barrels per day. Formerly known as Cochin Refineries Limited, the refinery was originally established as a joint venture in collaboration with Philips Petroleum Corporation, USA. It was later named Kochi Refineries Limited and today, it is a frontline entity as a unit of the Fortune 500 oil and gas Maharatna Bharat Petroleum. Cochin Refinery is one of the three refineries of Bharat Petroleum with a crude oil refining capacity of 15.5 million metric tons per annum. BPCL Kochi Refinery is one of the largest public sector refinery in the country. We have flexibility of meeting the market demands. We can sing our product portfolio according to market demands. We have a capacity to process even 104 types of different crudes, including Russian crudes. We were able to adapt to the technologies in a very quick time and make changes in our process condition to meet market demands. We can sing between petrol and diesel or to the LPG, propylene or any other products. And we have a product portfolio of around 30 products in, in Kochi refinery. Crude oil is one of the most important commodities in the world, accounting for one third of global energy consumption. Arguably, no commodity is more important for the modern economy than oil. With refineries in Mumbai, Kochi and Veena, Bharat Petroleum has a total refining capacity of over 35 million metric tons per annum. From 2.5 million metric tons per annum, Kochi refinery grew to be the largest PSU refinery in stages. The IREP complex and the petroleum complex of Kochi refinery were dedicated to the nation in 2019 and 21 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Crude oil varies in colour from nearly colourless to tar black and in viscosity from close to that of water to almost solid. In fact, there are more than 300 different types of crude oil produced around the world, all of which have different characteristics. Today, Kochi Refinery is not only the largest PSU refinery, but also a world-class refinery equipped to produce niche petrochemical products. Kochi Refinery is capable of continuous run days of units without affecting product availability. The units can be operated in different modes to suit product requirements as the market demands. The refinery registered the highest ever gross refinery margin of 7,916 crore against the business plan of 4,520 crore in 2021-22. From training to retraining and adhering to international standards in safety practices, both off-site and on-site, Kochi Refinery has made it all. Its mission is to make safe living and working a national mantra for its employees, contractual workers, customers and the general public. Its recent achievement of over 76 million accident-free man-hours is a testimony to the fact. Right from the initial stages, the refinery has always given utmost attention to environmental care and protection. Extensive anti-pollution measures have been incorporated into the design of the units. The refinery has developed a green belt in over 33% of the refinery area and it is the first industry in Kerala to be permitted to discharge treated affluent water into the river. Expansive rainwater harvesting ponds spreading across acres, unique ecological park, butterfly parks and fruit orchards being the refinery a scenic natural wonder. 
we have a lot of water bodies inside the refinery. All our effluent that is generated after treatment goes through something called a fire water pond. That fire water pond is from where we take uh, suction for all our pumps, the fire fighting pumps. Finally, it goes into the sea through our river water body. But you'll see that the canal is, the, the, the channel uh, all across the refinery is running. And from there, we recycle a lot of water back to our, for our own use. So you'll see that the water is conserved quite a bit. Plus, we have all those parks that I was talking about earlier, the four butterfly parks that we have, and plenty of green cover around. We have a eco park, which more than 3,000 uh, types of uh, species inside the refinery premises. Uh, if you look at our uh, rainwater harvesting area, it's about 20 acres of land with almost 2,25,000 kiloliters of water stored just to recharge the groundwater. So we are doing quite a bit towards environment protection. India is the next largest contributor of Asia's crude oil refining capacity after China. India is expected to contribute 15% of Asia's crude oil refining capacity in 2023 and BPCL refinery in Kochi is playing a major role in achieving that target. The oil and the gas sector is among the eight core industries in India. It plays a major role in influencing decision-making for all other important sections of the economy. India is planning to almost double its oil refining capacity to 450 metric tons in the next 10 years to meet the rising domestic fuel demand and cater to the export market. Exports of petroleum products increased by 107.47% from $21.4 billion in 2020-21 to $44.4 billion in 21-22. Despite increased focus on alternate sources like nuclear energy, wind and solar energy, in the short term, it will be very difficult to replace oil and gas. Till then, you can count on Kochi Refinery to continue to energize a new resurgent India. So let's end where we started. With camera persons Junaid Ekwal Khan, Dwayne Negi, and camera assistant Pradeep, I'm Pruthi Mishta signing off from somewhere in the middle of the Arabian Sea near Kochi.